How's it everyone? Gordon from Keto Model Works here. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm going to show you how to do the blotching technique with the Montana paint pen. Firstly, I wanted to thank everyone that subscribed, commented and watched the first video. I appreciate it and I hope you've gained a new technique. This video is primarily about the blotching technique, but it's also about the lessons I've learned so far from using these pens. Come along and take a look. For the people that watched part one of this video, you will know that I did not have to thin the paint I used in that video. So I thought I would get away with that once again. Yeah, no. Oh, and this is also going to be a test of patience. Something I regretfully do not have a lot of these days. So if you like watching an ape struggling to work with a paint pen then please feel free to continue watching and point and laugh <laughs> Up to this point I have done everything the same as in part 1. Except this is not sand gal, but olive green paint. Here the pen is already telling me something, but because I'm being impatient, it never crossed my mind that the paint might actually be too thick. And now you know where the ape reference came from. <laughs> because the olive green was thicker than the sand galp I used before, it was not flowing through the pen well enough to continue. The solution is to simply add thinner, and a 50-50 ratio worked just fine. After adding the thinner, the flow was, uh, surprise surprise, much improved, and I could continue to practice on a piece of paper. It is important to test and practice this technique before you start on your model. If you try this technique without practicing first and you mess up your model, well, tough. I have repeated this several times. Practice and practice and practice some more. I have uh, two techniques I use with this method. You draw the outline of the pattern and then complete it, staying inside the lines. And you can happily pretend that you are back in primary school if you feel like that. The other method is to dab the plot into place. Um, high quality paint is crucial because you need it to uh, level correctly. Lesson number two. This is the biggest lesson I've learned so far. And something that happened during this paint project was paint contamination. Yay! <laughs> I'm still not 100% sure what happened. I suspect there was some leftover sand galb in the filter and that got released into the fresh olive green paint. I did clean the pen thoroughly before I changed colors. The contamination is not visible here right now, it only became visible after the olive green dried. I do not mix colors with one pen anymore due to this experience. I have a pen for each color, one with sand galb, one with olive green. And I highly recommend that you buy a pen for each color you plan on using.
here are some pictures of the Stuka during construction. I think this is the best example of what can be achieved with this technique. The paint was not contaminated this time and therefore the scheme came out much nicer. I hope this video was helpful to you in some way and that you learned something new. If you liked it, I would appreciate you considering subscribing to my channel and liking the videos. Also click the little bell if you want to be notified of new videos from me. I am an Amazon affiliate and all the tools I used including the pens are in the description. Happy modeling and I will see you soon in part 3 where we take a look at some armor stuff you can do.